Welcome to Navigate STL Schools, a podcast. My name is Anastasia Allen. I'm the executive director at Navigate STL Schools, and I'm here today with Waikisha Atkins and Kennedy Miller with College Bound. How are you ladies doing today? Good. Very good. Thank you for having us. Awesome. So before we get started, I'm going to ask the question that we ask every person that comes on our show individually. What is your personal K-12 education story? Where did you go to school? How did you get into this work? Um, well, I I started my school journey in East St. Louis, Illinois. I attended a Catholic daycare for um, kindergarten and, well, really a head start to kindergarten. And then I attended A.M. Jackson Math and Science Academy. Uh, it is no longer a school, unfortunately, but I attended there from first grade to my sixth grade year. From seventh or for my seventh and eighth grade year, I moved to the suburbs, Belleville, Illinois, which was a culture shock, and I attended Whiteside uh, Middle School, and I graduated high school from Belleville East Township. So I am from Charleston, Missouri, and I have to put the Missouri qualifier on there because if I say Charleston, people will automatically think the East Coast. Mm -hmm. I was a Head Start kid as well. Went to Warren E. Hearns Elementary School, which housed one through five. And then I went to a separate middle school for sixth grade. And then I went to another middle school for seventh and eighth. And then I am a proud graduate of Charleston High School. Awesome. So what has inspired you? Well, before we get started, what is College Bound? College Bound is a college access and preparatory program for students dedicated to getting them to and through college. We do emphasize support of first generation demonstrated need students. What makes our program very unique is that we start working with students their sophomore year of high school and we keep working with them until they have a degree in hand ready to enter their careers. Oh, wow. So what inspired you to do this work? So originally, uh, well, prior to joining the College Bound team, I worked at Southeast Missouri State. I was the director of learning assistance programs, and within that capacity, I got familiar with College Bound. We had a lot of St. Louis students that came to Southeast Missouri State, and my department was one that those students had to interact with. And learning about College Bound, learning about the mission and vision, myself being a first-generation demonstrated need student as well, I understood the importance of these resources, and it just made me compelled to take my involvement with College Bound further. You're saying first generation demonstrated needs. Yes. What does that mean? So first generation means that my parents don't have a bachelor's degree and demonstrated me need means that I'm low income. So I was eligible for Pell Grants, Access Missouri, and all of those things. And do students that apply for College Bound have to have both of those qualifiers? So we're in a very and or type situation. We typically look for a student to have at least one of those indicators. With the first generation college student, their parents not knowing the college landscape, so we can help out with that. And then for those demonstrated needs students, we help our students with applying for scholarships so we can provide those needs for them as well. So what is something unexpected that you've encountered in this work? Something unexpected, I would probably say, uh, um, I wish it was something positive, but uh, I would say the amount of students who are not aware that or I guess aware of the resources that are at their hands um, in the area in St. Louis. And um, I also didn't expect the many <laughs> high schools that are in, within St. Louis, but um, I guess just working with them and talking to them, getting to know them more on a personal level um, and understanding that this is probably the first time they've had a conversation about college. Mm -hmm. That was a little bit of a shock for me, but also understanding that they are – <clears throat> from inner cities or the inner city um myself being from the inner city as well but I had a different experience so that was a little bit of a shock for me so I I went to Ohio State University on a similar scholarship called um Young Scholars Program mm -hmm. and they worked with us from sixth grade through undergrad and it was a really interesting moment at graduation because they literally say you know look to your left look to your right some of the people are not going to be here when it's time to graduate and that was really true for uh, matriculating through Ohio State even with the support of that program can you talk at all about the importance of starting early especially with inner city and urban uh, college students or pre-college students as they prepare for that transition to college because I think for me it was really a shock of one life is so different but to um, especially just uh, being an oldest black girl, being an oldest child, being a first generation college student, like 
preparing my family for the absence of my responsibility and leaving and things like that. I, I, how do you prepare students for that? And what's the importance of starting early for those students and preparing families for that transition? So I mentioned that we start working with students their sophomore year of high school, but during their freshman year is when we go, we're doing our recruitment, they're submitting their applications and doing their college bound interviews. Kennedy and I have been having a conversation as far as is freshman year early enough to start interacting with them with their GPA is being important, taking those college preparatory courses, having the opportunity for advanced placement courses and early college credit. So we really have the mindset of taking a very holistic approach. So assessing our students' goals, thinking about where they are academically, and just letting them know that it's never too early. We're talking about scholarships. You have to have a certain GPA to maintain to have those. At College Bound, we look at a 2.5 GPA to enroll the students, but we're hoping that they graduate with at least a 3.0, because the higher the GPA, the more likely they are to have scholarships. So really having those conversations with them early, talking about the importance of GPA, talking about the importance of taking challenging courses, also talking about just putting their best foot forward. A lot of colleges and universities look for a academically rounded student. So not only a student with a high GPA, but a student that's involved in extracurriculars. College Bound is a great extracurricular, but it's also a commitment for our students, and we let them know that our goal is to make our students as comfortable and confident as they can be as they matriculate to college and go on campuses. So what schools do you guys operate in? How do they? How do we find you? Like, how do we, where do we, how do we connect to College Bound? If I'm a college student or a parent, yeah. So that that is a really a really good question. And the reason that I chuckled is that right now we have students that represent 51 schools in St. Louis. And to think about that large of an impact here is just mind blowing to me. We are a very robust recruitment team. So we're going into parent teacher conferences. We're doing lunch tablings. We're doing in class presentations. We're doing application workshops. Whatever we can do to bring college bound information to students, we do that. We work with our counselors very closely to get an idea of when the best time is for us to come into the schools. Um, one thing that Kennedy has noticed is that the more frequently we come in the schools, the bigger the impact. And she also noticed that if we start with the in-class presentation talking about our resources and what we provide and then have an additional touch point with the lunch tabling, they're more likely to, oh, I remember talking to you all and to take it seriously. We're really demonstrating and working with how often we can get parents involved. So with our model, parents are involved as soon as the student expresses interest. Now, some parents attend the student interviews, which we let them know, hey, this is the student's time to shine. We're glad that y'all are here, but giving the student the floor and giving them the opportunity to share, but just making our parents aware of how much of an active partner they are with this process, because they are. We need their help to get their students to and through college. What resources do you guys provide for the students and alumni that you work with? Typically, we offer tutoring services, um, but it is a cohort model for the program, so it kind of just depends as far as what is offered every year. But generally, we offer uh, stabilization needs, uh, so whether that is assistance with rent, utilities, uh, food. Um, for college students or for the two college students? That are in I would say both. Mm -hmm. Yes, for both. Okay. So even high school uh, students. Um, there is ACT preparation, but... We really just focus on helping the students uh, shape their personal skills, their academic skills, um, preparing them for life, life or college life skills, I guess you could say. Um, am I missing anything? I know, I think you're good. Okay. I can tag in though. We try to have a delicate balance between instilling the the advocacy within our students, not coddling them, treating them like independent adults and giving them the college playing field as a high school student. So they have the opportunity to earn early college credit. So they um, we have a partnership with UMSL and we have the College Bound Summer Institute where they're on the UMSL campus. They get to take classes, they get to have that experience before they graduate college. So really wanting to give them that exposure and put them in that college mindset before they step foot on a college campus because if they feel like they have the experience and the exposure, they'll be more confident and they can navigate appropriately. What do you think is the greatest challenge that some of these uh, students are facing coming out of high school in St. Louis, particularly inner city St. Louis, and, and going off to college? Schools have different amounts and types of resources, yeah. and that's where we 
really try to identify which schools will benefit from us the most. So some students have very robust college access support already. They may have been working with a college counselor or a high school counselor as early as their freshman year of high school. They may already have their college list identified, what they want to major in, et cetera. But we have some schools that don't have those resources or schools that have them and the ratio is so large that it's hard for that counselor to work with everyone. So one school that we work in in particular, there's one college and career counselor to about 800 students. Oh. So they would really have to prioritize their time as far as which students need me the most, which students are most likely to matriculate, and where is my time best spent. So I think that students having different high school experiences really shape their college experience. Some students may have the opportunity to take early college credit, so when they're a full-time college student, they don't have as many of those struggles. But some students, it may be the first time that they've been exposed to college when they're on that college campus. And that can be intimidating, thinking about the fact that some of our students stay in state, some don't. Some, this may be the first time that they've left their families. So really just assessing where they are their personal journey and how we can help them feel confident as they're getting ready to start their college journey. You brought up a really good point that there's a lot of inequity based on which school building you're choosing for your child to go to. What do you think uh, is important for parents and for uh, middle school students to consider as they're selecting a high school and their college-minded and their college-minded individuals? What do you think that they should consider? They should consider the school size, the student to teacher ratio, and what type of experiential education they can provide. Is it a school that has dual credit opportunities where they can start earning those college credits as a high school student? Is it a school that has the opportunity to take them on college visits so they can experience those campuses before they graduate? Is it a school that has the opportunity to have like external partners come in? So to talk about different careers, talk about different colleges, talk about different opportunities. So really talking to the student, what is it that you wanna do? Is it college or is it a technical school? Do you wanna go to the military or do you wanna be an entrepreneur? And based on that student's plan, really mapping out what school is the best fit for that. And to plug your organization, I think that Navigate STL Schools is great and you all bridge that gap as someone that has a small child and came here and trying to figure out what school is the best fit it's it's easy to get lost in translation so I appreciate the resources that you all provide because you can help families make those decisions for their child's future awesome thank you so much for that that plug <laughs> um so what are some of the benefits that a, a student can get from just being connected to a program like college bound or early other early intro programs like trio as they're going through college so Circling back to something that Kennedy said, we do have a cohort model. So each class of insert number that comes in, those are the same students that they're experiencing college bound with. They build that camaraderie, they build that support system, and they really can support and uplift each other. So just having a connection to a student support system is great. But also the fact that I mentioned we're in 51 schools. So our students have an opportunity to interact with students that they may not normally cross paths with, get to have different perspectives and really enrich their lives by learning from others. Um, also, we are very robust in our offerings. So I mentioned our goal is to give our students the college success playbook giving them that early exposure. So taking them on college visits, allowing them to do early college credit, allowing them to interact with different universities. So as they're making those college decisions, they can have that context of this is the best school for me and I've had the opportunity to experience the campus. So it's really all about experience and the fact that we are very community-based. So not only is the student the person we're working with, but we take time to assess their family situation. <coughs> Kennedy had touched on the stabilization services that we offer, and that's because we understand that our families have different walks of life. And if a student is struggling in the home or if a family is struggling, if they're wondering where their next meal is coming from or if they're going to have lights and power when they get home, how can they focus on being a successful high school student, let alone matriculate into college? So we really have to assess that family situation, get their home situation stable, and then we could talk about graduating high school. Then we could talk about college planning. So we just really have a holistic approach when we work with the students. I wanted to piggyback a little bit or add something on. Um, I think you touched on everything. I would add that we provide a sense of community for the students. Um, a lot of conversations that I overhear that uh, with the students and their coaches um, when they're talking about going to college is that they are wanting to either go to a HBCU because of because that's 
practically what they've been in <laughs> their whole K through 12, um, just being in school with um, people that look like them or their peers mm-hmm. or that look like them, which there's absolutely nothing wrong with. Um, I think it is important for them to gain that sense of community, though, because it puts them in an uncomfortable position um, to meet and interact with students that are like them or absolutely nothing like them, but they still have to work with them or work alongside of them. Um, Earlier when I mentioned my story, I was taken out of an inner city school into a a more suburban area. And um, I don't know what my mom's thought process was behind that. Not that it was a bad thing. Obviously, she put us in a very uncomfortable situation. However, I do think it ended up um, helping us in the long run and it benefited us in the long run so that we could feel more comfortable in different spaces. And so I think that's really important for the students as well, along with their comfortability and where they're at in school or where they choose to go to school. So helping them figure out how to challenge reality and, yeah. and explore something different. I think that's really cool. So who is eligible to apply for college bound and how would they go about it? You talked about your recruitment process, but say you're not in my school or I'm in sixth grade and I really, I, I I I want my kids to do this. Who and who's eligible and how do they apply? So typically we encourage our eighth grade students to um, apply the summer before their freshman year. I think Waikishia stated earlier that we are looking to try to reach uh, students at a younger or at an earlier time, but um, they are able to submit an interest form on our website, www.collegeboundstl.org. And um, once they submit an interest form, they become a lead within our system. We reach out to them um, really at the beginning of their freshman year to uh, encourage them to apply to the program. So they submit an application. Um, To be eligible, you must have a 2.5 GPA, but that doesn't really come along until the end of their first first semester freshman year. First generation students, we prioritize. We also uh, prioritize low income families, but that does not disqualify you from joining the program if you don't meet those requirements. Uh, Really, we also look for motivation to be in the program. We find that a lot of students just join because it may look good on paper or because they wanna be with their friends, but we also want to see that you are interested in furthering your education and being serious about it, taking it serious. My last official question for you guys today is what gives you hope? You guys work with a lot of young people and students. What gives you hope about the future of St. Louis and the quality of education that the kids are receiving here? There are a lot of things that give me hope. I would just say really the willingness, the willingness of the school administrators that let us in, the willingness of the parents to allow us to work with their students from their sophomore to senior year, just the the passion and the hunger to learn. We hear a lot of student stories among the recruitment trail and it's all centered in wanting to do better, wanting to be better. So thinking about building generational wealth, challenging some of those generational curses like the people want more and I'm so happy that we're in a position where we can provide that educational piece as well as be a support system for our students and families. Um, I would agree on the student level I do even though I did say uh, most of them are not usually thinking about their future there are a handful who do think about their future every day on a daily basis and and I can tell that just from interviewing them or having small conversations with them in the office and I think that's important to point out because while they may not want your average nine to five or they may not want to go the same route that their parents did whether it was successful or unsuccessful um to them i think it's important to recognize that they are motivated to making a change in their lives uh that would eventually matriculate over into other people's lives um most of these students have grown up in st louis and they love st louis and they love their city and i think that with the motivation that they have to make a change in their own lives um they will probably eventually give back to their own city and try to make it a better place for the new students coming up. Awesome. And how do people find you guys? Where do they find the two of you? How do they connect with College Bound, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok? I don't know. Um, They can find us on LinkedIn at College Bound, St. Louis, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you can find us on Instagram at College Bound STL. You can find us on Facebook at College Bound St. Louis. Um, you can find me at the College Bound headquarters. Um, I'm usually upstairs in my desk. Um, 
email, yes, K Miller. It is K Miller, M I L L E R, at collegeboundstl.org. Pretty much hit everything. Our, <laughs> our headquarters is located on 110 North Jefferson Avenue. We can see the soccer stadium from our backyard. So, being downtown is a nice location because we do have a lot of St. Louis City schools represented, as well as North County, South County, West County. Um, we are very active on Instagram. I think one of the biggest challenges is the fact that we have so many different audiences, right? So, we're marketing the high school students, marketing the high school staff, and parents and universities and the community so trying to figure out which platform is the best but i would say like as far as our students are concerned instagram is the place to be kennedy and i typically do an instagram story anytime we visit high school so if you're on our instagram page and see that we're there feel free to stop by we do a lot of presentations and a lot of lunch tablings as well um pretty active on facebook but it seems like that may be more the older crowd so for our students definitely give us a follow on instagram we'd love to connect Awesome. Email for you by Keisha? Yeah. My email is watkins at collegeboundstl.org, but we also have a recruitment account that's recruitment at collegeboundstl.org. Most of the communications that we make with students, families, and counselors do come from that recruitment email account. So feel free to add us to your address book so we don't go to spam. Awesome. Thank you guys for listening, and thank you guys for being here today.